let's first talk about how we normally deal with pain of any kind. For most of us, it's common to find some way, even just a distraction, to not feel the pain quite so much. It's so easy to get um, pulled into so many other things to avoid what's actually really here, especially when it comes to the difficult moments in life. So I work with families who have experienced the death of an infant or a child or a homicide or a suicide. These are really traumatic experiences. And I think as in general, we as a, we as a society in general don't know how to um, cope with others' suffering and even our own suffering. I think we try to circumvent it. We use whatever we can to distract ourselves from being able to tolerate our own painful human emotions. We're really trained to turn away from these things. And distraction's a handy technique, but as a, you know, as a way of life, distraction uh, isn't necessarily the most skillful way of doing things. If avoidance is all we have, then we're setting ourselves up for great failure down the road. Because not only have we avoided this source of suffering, we haven't looked at it, we haven't addressed it, we haven't done any work on it. Not only that, but we've also created a new addiction in our life. Every time I feel this, every time I sense this suffering present, I go and do this. We go, have a, we go watch a movie with a friend, or maybe we have a drink, or maybe we have several drinks, or maybe we go out and look for a sexual partner that we have no business being with, but it's anything is better than being in this situation with this suffering. I can think of one person who basically wanted to sleep about 12 to 15 hours a day, get up, go to work, and um, then go back to sleep, and basically wanted medication to a threshold that she would know she could sleep 12 to 15 hours and then just go up, uh, get up and go to work and come home again. So I asked her about why she was doing that and basically it was to avoid her life and because it was too painful for her. And I said, I, it's uncomfortable for me having to write these prescriptions for you to avoid your life. Um, let's talk about what's going on and why you're wanting to do that. And she's like, I don't want to. Whether escaping through alcohol, television, shopping, sleeping, binge eating, pornography, prescription drug abuse, or some other way, the overall aim of these approaches is to decrease pain soon, immediately if possible. While each of these things may offer some kind of short-term relief, it can be easy to sense that on a deeper level, things are still not quite right. To everyone else, I looked happy, looked like I was coping, doing a great job, you know, progressing in my career, all that great stuff. But below the surface there was this stuff that was just churning and I, I knew I wasn't coping. For people who have distressing thoughts and feelings, they probably already know that whatever they have been doing hasn't been working. Trying to escape by overworking or using recreational substances or spending a lot of time online or shopping. Most of the options to escape, all of the options to escape actually that I've ever encountered have pretty dramatically bad side effects. Ultimately, they cause suffering. You get it and you think, is this it? From a psychological perspective, if you're doing it to avoid the feelings that you're confronted with, you know, all it does is postpone the problem, prolong the problem. It doesn't solve the problem, doesn't fix the problem. And anybody who's developed an alcohol problem knows that to be the case. So avoidance, while it may offer temporary relief, does not um, solve the problem over the long haul.